Okay, so I don't know whether to be happy or sad about this, but in creating my new video, I actually spent maybe a couple weeks working on it, and then Runway came out with the Aleph feature. Or is it Aleph? Either way, it kind of screwed up the momentum of my video, but after doing some experiments, I decided to integrate it in my new video. So check it out. Okay, so I'm in After Effects. I have my stock clip here of my main characters walking down an isolated street, and I wanna make this more apocalyptic, but keep my main characters intact. So I'm gonna to go to Runway with my clip, and if you stick around till the end, I'll show you how to use the new Aleph tool to create some crazy videos like you saw in my intro. But for now, we're gonna stick with the Gen 3 model. I have my prompt, I'll copy in here, and I'm gonna use the Gen 3 Turbo model for this one, and I'll hit Generate. This is one of the results that I got. It's pretty good. You could see how it changed my characters, which I didn't like, but it kept the structure, which is okay because I'm gonna bring it into After Effects anyway. So I'll download that after I upscale it to 4K, of course. Okay, so now I have my clip imported in After Effects, overlaid over my original footage. And the first thing I'm gonna do is mask out the roadway in my Gen 3 result. And since this is a moving shot, I'll have to track the motion. So I'll start with my Gen 3 clip and I'll go to Animation, Track in Boris FX Mocha, and I'll click on the Mocha icon and Mocha will pop right up. And in Mocha, I'll use the X spline tool. So I'll select my entire roadway here. And since it's a moving shot, I'll enable the perspective option and I'll track forward and speeding this up for you. Once it's complete, I'll save this and I'll jump back into After Effects. Now in After Effects, in my Mocha settings, I'll go to the matte dropdown and I'll click Create AE Masks. And you see it perfectly applies the tracked mask to my specific layer. All I need to do now is invert it, and I'll feather the Y axis quite a bit to blend it nicely, and that looks pretty good. Now let's have some fun with it. I'll select my bottom layer, and I'll hit Track and Stabilize, Track Camera. So once this is done analyzing, you can see all the track marks here. I'll select a bunch of these in the area that I wanna add my first 3D object, and I'll click Create Solid and Camera. From there, I'll adjust my solid parameters a bit. Let's bring our Gen 3 layer back. And I'll drag my first GLB object. This is a series of buildings. I grabbed this from Sketchfab. I'll drop that link below for you. And as I drag that into my sequence, I can scale it with my initial model settings if I want, but I'm actually gonna use this trick. I'm gonna hold shift and use the parent pick whip to send this layer right against the solid, as you can see. I'll adjust the orientation and position quite a bit to get the city right where I want it to be right alongside the road. And I'll hide the solid layer. And that's looking really good. Now let's fine tune the lighting a bit. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna hit new light. I'll keep this as an environment light. And now this building has some light on it, which is good, but it needs some adjustments. So if I go over to the properties panel in the light options, I'll change the source to my main bottom layer. And that's gonna make the bottom layer almost a guide layer, so it'll hide that automatically. But I don't want that. So I'll bring that back and unhide it. And now that's looking really good, blended together pretty nicely. Now jumping ahead a bit, I ended up using the same process as before, tracking another layer in Mocha, I grabbed some of these bushes from the Gen 3 scene and overlaying it on top of my building layer for some more environment blending. And I did the same thing, once it's tracked, I feathered it really good, and it looks really good pretty realistic. And now from here, I'll select another tracking point from my main bottom layer again, and I'll use that for my second 3D layer that I got from Sketchfab. I'll drag that in, and I'll use that shift parent pick whip trick again to track to the new solid, and I'll make my adjustments to the 3D element. And that's looking really, really good. So here's the final result. So that's the version that I created using some old fashioned tools like Gen 3, but here's the version that I created using Aleph. All right, let me walk you through Aleph. So in Runway, I'm gonna go down to Generate Video, and I'm gonna go to Video, and I'll upload this final version that we created here. So for prompting with Aleph, a lot of times, it'll either change the entire video and your subject will kind of get skewed a little bit, or it'll just add elements to the video and your subject will kind of remain intact. So you kind of have to play around with it a little bit. 
So I'm gonna add the prompt here, add to the background horizon, a city in flames, smoke rising, realistic, keeping all elements and characters intact. Let's see what that comes up with. And here's our result. As you can see, the video remains intact and we have our smoke and our fire in the background, which is really good. Again, it's really about kind of getting the right prompt because sometimes it'll change your entire video and sometimes it'll just add elements to your video. Like if you look at this other example that I did, I just did add a Sasquatch to the background. This is a regular video of me just walking around. And then if you look at the result, it's the exact same video, but the Sasquatch in the background didn't change anything about me or the background. It just added an element to it. So there you have it. Check it out for yourself. Let me know what you think.